Two active shooter locations, all available units. Normal night of bowling, and out of nowhere, he just came in, and there was a loud pop. And as soon as I turned and saw he was holding a weapon, I just booked it. Heard the first one, it was probably 15 feet behind me. I mean, it was close. Very close. A witness describing the chaos as a gunman opened fire inside of a bowling alley, then turned the gun on people at a restaurant just down the road. Right now, at least 18 are dead from this mass shooting in Lewiston, Maine, 13 others injured. Police are still on the hunt for the suspected gunman who's been identified as a former military person with recent mental health issues. He was a firearms instructor and Army reservist. ABC's Morgan Norwood is in Lewiston, Maine, with an update from police less than an hour ago. A massive manhunt underway after mass shootings at two locations in Lewiston, Maine, left at least 18 people dead and 13 others wounded. The first 911 call coming in around 7 p.m. from a local bowling alley that was hosting a youth night for a kid's bowling league. We have an active shooter. We have multiple injuries. Authorities releasing these surveillance images showing the suspect they're looking for. His name is Robert Card, and he's pictured armed with an AR-15 style rifle. Mr. Card is considered armed and dangerous and police advise that Maine people should not approach him under any circumstances. Megan Hutchinson and her 10 year old daughter Zoe were at the bowling alley. Zoe's leg grazed by a bullet. I never thought I'd grow up and get a bullet in my leg. Why? Like, why do people do this? After allegedly shooting several people inside the bowling alley, Card is believed to have traveled about four miles to a local bar and restaurant. Sources tell ABC News that Card has a history of military service and is a firearms instructor. He was treated at a mental health facility over the summer after allegedly saying he was hearing voices and threatened to shoot up a National Guard facility in Maine. We also have an incredibly strong laser-like focus on bringing this suspect into custody and ultimately to justice. Authorities discovering Card's white Subaru around 11.30 p.m., just eight miles from Lewiston's crime scenes. Multiple communities on alert being asked to shelter in place, and some nearby schools have closed for the day. You and me and all these people standing here, we, we all got a fear for our lives today, and it's not the way it's, I grew up. And according to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been 565 mass shootings just this year alone, with last night's shooting being the deadliest. The White House has lowered flags to half staff. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Lewiston, Maine. We'll be on the story all day, so stay connected with us through whas11.com and on the whas11 app. EPA officials say they've successfully completed operations at the Highview home once filled with dangerous explosive materials and any risk for explosion or fire is over. It is our top local story here at noon. Senior reporter Isaiah Kim Martinez and senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton are live now on Applegate Lane. Isaiah. Well, Brooke, more than two months since this whole issue was first put on our radar and 10 days since that demolition started. People living here can finally breathe a sigh of relief. That's according to Mayor Craig Greenberg, Metro EMS, and of course the EPA. Now take a look at this video, brand new video we got for you today. Uh, for the first time, we got an up close look on the property wrapped around with those storage containers used as barriers. Here in this video, you can see what's now a hole in the ground. That's where crews took apart the home piece by piece removing any hazardous debris and chemicals, which we're told have been taken to an MSD facility for temporary storage. Now, in a news conference today, EPA on scene coordinator Chuck Berry told us there were actually about 100 chemicals inside. Previously, the city had said about 20 playing a role in them opting not to go for a controlled burn. That's part of the reason why we went with this option, and I, and I want to give uh, Louisville Metro a lot of credit for reassessing the situation. This process worked exactly as it's supposed to. This is exactly what should have happened there. And we all got together, looked at the problem, came up with another solution and implemented it. So what's next? Barry says they will still need to find a permanent facility to dispose of the chemicals once and for all. Crews also still need to break through the foundation of the Applegate Lane property and put in new soil and eventually new grass. Now we're told the EPA will continue to break down uh, that property, uh, the site itself over the next week. That means that road restrictions will continue in intermittently, at least for the next few days. Now those storage units though, we're told by tonight, 
they will be removed. So it'll definitely be a different look. Now coming up here in early evening shows, we're going to talk about the price tag for this whole project and who's paying. Brooke. All right, Isaiah, thank you. Well, the man who owns the Applegate property is out of jail. Mark Hibble posted his $10,000 bond Monday. A judge ordered him to get immediate treatment for his mental health, and as part of that order, the former chemist is to have no contact with chemicals or dangerous substances. UAW employees at the Kentucky truck plant are headed back to work this week. The union's president, Sean Fain, said Ford and the union reached a tentative deal. Our Ian Hardwood is out speaking with the workers after last night's announcement. Ian, everyone back at work? Not yet, Brooke, although some people have received a call to return back to work. The parking lot here looks pretty empty today compared to what I saw before the strike began. Now to fully end the strike, the union members are still going to have to ratify their contract. We're not sure when that vote is going to happen yet, but a UAW member at the hall this morning told me they're going to receive more information on that Sunday. Those details include a 25% pay increase over four and a half years is short of the 40% UAW President Sean Fain asked for. Some union members I spoke to on the picket line over the past week said they didn't expect to reach that high, but last night we heard from one who is disappointed with the result. Cost of living adjustments return in the agreement. It's something the union gave up during the 2008 recession to help keep Ford afloat. There's still some unanswered questions about the return to work process. We're meeting with UAW local 862 President Todd Dunn in just a few minutes, really, 1230 back at the Union Hall. We're going to bring you what he says at 4 o'clock. For now, I'm live in Louisville. Ian Hardwit, WHAS 11, on your side. Ian, thank you. In a statement, Ford CEO and President Jim Farley said they're pleased to have reached a new labor contract with the UAW. He said we are focused on restarting Kentucky Truck Plant, Michigan Assembly Plant and Chicago Assembly Plant, calling 20,000 Ford employees back to work and shipping our full lineup to our customers again. GM and Stellantis are still in negotiations. The Kentucky Supreme Court is weighing in on the Crystal Rogers case in response to Brooks Houck's request to have the judge dismissed. Houck is charged with murder and the disappearance of his former girlfriend, Crystal Rogers. His attorneys claim Nelson County Judge Charles Sims showed bias toward Houck through current and former court proceedings. Now, Kentucky Supreme Court Chief Justice Lawrence B. Van Meter is responding to that request, sending it back to the Nelson County courtroom. The Chief Justice wants the attorneys first to ask Judge Sims to recuse himself, and if he declines, Sims will be asked to submit his own reasons for staying on the case. The Chief Justice says at that point he will review the facts and determine whether to designate a regular or retired justice or judge of the court of justice as a special judge. Now, this is just the latest court document filed in the case. Houck's attorneys have also asked the Kentucky Court of Appeals to review Judge Sims' decision to keep his bond at $10 million. A federal grand jury indicted the founder and CEO of Veterans Club. Army veteran Jeremy Harrell is accused of fraudulently receiving more than $100,000 worth of unemployment benefits from Veterans Affairs. The indictment said Harrell started receiving benefits back in 2011 and agreed to tell the VA if he ever returned to work. Well, back in 2019, Harrell founded Veterans Club, providing veterans with services like housing assistance and vocational training. Investigators say his volunteer work with the organization shows he was capable of maintaining employment, making him ineligible to receive benefits. We reached out to Harold, but we're told he couldn't comment at this point. His first court appearance is scheduled for next Wednesday.